King of Jesus is amazing. Anything you want, you can do. I go in to doctors, they'll be like, so what's up? I'm, like, I'm Jesus, mate. They'll be like that, and they'll be like, right. And I was like, yeah, I'm bloody Jesus. I'm talking to God now. I didn't give a shit. That side of it is really good, which sounds weird, you know. I remember my auntie sent me a letter uh, saying, like, I hope you get through this um, dark time. And I was like, this ain't a dark time, this is fucking wicked, man. It was a gradual uh, rise of becoming more uh, erratic and uh, racing thoughts and acting very, uh, a bit recklessly. And this accumulated to then flipping into becoming Jesus and talking to dead people and shit. My dad died in 2012, that was that, but it was, that was a while ago, you know, and I did get over that, but I guess it's always subconsciously inside you. As I got to uni, I became to get more and more obsessed with drugs. For five months, there wasn't one moment where I wasn't thinking about drugs. I can't, I can't express how that was really true. Like, every single second of my day was thinking about them. It was a horrific, pure, like, empty deadness. So yeah, it was the dads, uh, it was the drugs, and the romantic, failures. It's like talking to my dead dad in my head. I, I went to my flatmate, I was like, oh, I'm talking to my dad, you know, do you want to have a word with him? He's like, what? And it's like my dead dad. And like in hindsight, like that's like fucking mental. But I didn't actually realise that. And uh, and um, my flatmates called the like a mental team or whatever. I talked to a doctor. I told them like I thought I was Jesus and everything. I remember he laughed at me when I left the room. I remember I said I was Jesus. I remember he was just like laughing to himself afterwards when we left. And I met him again in hospital. And um, I went up to him. I was like, "Oh, you right, mate?" And he just ignored me. Like looked me in the like, eyes and just said nothing because I guess he just. Um, he doesn't think people who are mental are real people. So he's a bloody bastard. I was now acting very like recklessly towards people with a real attitude of push these ideas of helping people and not being rich. And so yeah, I was in this office and this guy's wearing like an expensive watch and I was like, mate, you're going to hell for that, man. You know, what are you wearing with that stupid, what are you doing that for, you bloody ass? You know, not like horrible, but like just being like in his face about it. My mum's friend picked me up uh, in a car, quite a nice car, so I think you know where this is going. Um, and she, um, we were sat in the car, and she's a really sweet, love, she's a nice woman, helping us out, you know, she's a nice lady. And I said to her, I was like, you and all your children, they're going to hell, mate, for this expensive car, you know. I was talking to God, so like, he's, he's the man, you know, like, I'm not going to fuck with God, like, and he's, he's in charge, and he's, you know, and he's the boy, so I'm not going to mess with God. You know, and people are like, oh yeah, I don't give a shit what people think about me, God, I just do what I want. Like, now you don't because that is actually not thinking what you care about people at all and it's not good. There was one point where I remember he was saying to me if I jumped out the window, I, God was saying I'd, I'd fly out the window and I'd die and I'd get resurrected at an Oasis concert and like walk out to live forever. I remember saying I feel invincible man. I was like, I feel invincible, nothing scares me. So I was at my house and I was just shouting with my family, just getting quite frustrated. But they didn't understand that I was like, God. And I was, I was like, how did you get it? You know, I'm Jesus, this is brilliant. Why can't you be happy? Why don't you understand? It was getting so loud that the neighbours called the police um, in that quite like middle class way of not even like checking out what was going on. Just called the police and the police came. And I was happy to go because like, I was talking to God and he was like, it's all part of your journey, man. I was like, all right, dude. And yeah, he hadn't quite mentioned the worm's eye, but you know, I had my fingers crossed. I'll do what I need to do. I was giving it all that to all the, like, the nurses and doctors being like, yeah, 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 I'm Jesus now. Like, I now said to God, you know what, mate, I'm Jesus, you know, let's have it. They said to me, they were like, um, right, well, we're going to take you to a proper mental hospital now. And then I was like, oh, hang on a minute. <laughs> I was like, oh, you know what, I was joking. I was like, that should be on Jesus. And she's like, nah, nah, you know, you're going. I had a word with the old God, and um, he was like, yeah, you've got to do this. You know, you've got to do this, man. This is the next stage. So I was like, all right, let's do it. So I get out of the van, I'm in hospital. Uh, it was late at night now, early hours, so it was a bit dead. I think at first I was a bit pissed off, it was so quiet, and I started running around making noise, being like, you know, we need to, let's mix things up, have some fun here. But in hindsight, I realised that's because everyone's asleep, so I shut the fuck up, really. 
Those first few days of being at the hospital were the most mad. I'm writing a Bible on my laptop, doing that with God, thinking I'm writing it, and I'm so animated and passionate for it, you know, I'm really buzzing, I'm like, this is the new Bible. I then started to keep thinking I was travelling in time, where I'd walk past my room and it'd be the next day. And I kept thinking I was going millions, hundreds of years into the future again and again. I'd kept coming back as Jesus and I thought I kept coming to hell and going through it and until they sorted out the world as I wanted. I was hallucinating on the TV that it was the future and like there was all this weird weather from the future. From completely clear. I was watching the TV and it was like Madeleine McCann's been found and stuff. I don't know why I, why I had picked that. But you believe it because you can see it with your own eyes. This is like the, the peak. I heard all these sounds of like a revolution like, and people like cheering. And then I saw my own eyes, a spaceship come down, which I thought was God's spaceship. I was like, right, so basically the world hasn't been doing what I wanted, sort life out and how I've said. And God said, right, mate, you know, we're fucking off. They're not, they're not listening to you. You and me, let's go to heaven, mate. Enough of this. I'm like, all right, mate, sounds good. Um, and I tried to get out of the hospital, but now obviously the nurse and doctors and Pete's staff there are like, no, you, you're, you're staying here, mate. And that was really frustrating because I could hear the sound of the spaceship as well. It was like a revving and it was like oh, this machinery sound. And I could hear people cheering outside like this revolution. So in my head, it was like really fucked up because it was like, please, I need to go to fucking heaven with God now. Um, can you let me out? And I was trying to climb out windows, I was trying to climb out doors. I jumped over the med counter, tried to like sm smash through the window and get out. And I remember I stood up and I went, I'm the fucking Messiah. And this little woman called Sylvia, a nice little woman, I was like, you're the new devil, Sylvia. And she was like, you're so young, you're like my son, so young. I was like, I'm getting fucking out of it. And five, six, seven, loads of people had to come restrain me. Uh, pin me down and like put a syringe in my ass of tranquilizer, and then I remember feeling very, very faint. Being pinned down and injected in my ass sounds quite sex sexy, but it wasn't. You know, it wasn't very fun. I thought that the staff were all against me and trying to kill me. I was like, they're all evil. How can they? I'm God's here, and I need to go with God, and I'm the Messiah, and you're trying to keep me here. And I thought when he injected me. God was saying I needed to feel this bad feeling of the drug stuff again one more time as like a as a crucifixion right to like feel this pain that all that suffering and whatever that experience was I needed to feel it again. I was also talking to my dad at times during this being in hospital. I had a better relationship with my dad in my head. We were joking more and, and which was nice. It was kind of like the relationship I wanted with my dad I got in my head. I spent six weeks in hospital. They were like, Luke, you, you can go now. And I was like, all right. It was a very mad place. Yeah, I probably wouldn't recommend it. Yeah, so I continued thinking about Jesus for like two and a half months or so. I thought there was going to be this big disaster, like all these planes were going to smash into um, London and that would reveal me as the Messiah. What was going to happen is like God's wrath. When that event didn't happen, that was the, the turning point where I was like, oh, I'm not Jesus. And that's when the high ended and it turned bad. It really isolated myself during that period. There's just absolutely no willpower to do anything. Like All I ate was pot noodles and I'd just piss in the pot noodle, put a mug like, next to my bed. That intense feeling of like wanting to die like all the time. And it, it wasn't to like escape uh, like a pain, it was the pain. It wasn't, that's not why I wanted to die. It was kind of, um, the reasoning was like all these situations and ways I was feeling about certain things. I wanted that to ever be over and I wanted me to be over so that didn't exist. And then I was waiting for all my family's generations to be over, I was dreaming about. And then no one would ever remember me and then the earth would die and then uh, that would all be over. No one would ever remember all these stupid things that happened to me. Yeah, those were really, really bad days, wanting this to be dead. When you're in that suicidal place, you just think it's gonna last forever. Like, honestly, in my heart, I was like, this is gonna last for eternity, man. Like, it just takes a long time. To now, like, sit here and be like, I genuinely don't wanna die. Or, like, I genuinely wanna live. And I genuinely don't feel as strongly as I do about all those things I was thinking about at all. Well, mostly. It's really mad. Mad, almost madder than being Jesus. So, like, I really hope 
like the worst is over. And that's it really. Yeah, I became Jesus, which is kind of cool, but like doesn't really mean that much. And that's a really nice way to feel, but um, it's not a good way to be. Hello, your call cannot be taken at the moment, so please leave your message after the tone. Hi John, uh, Luke here. Uh, yeah, watched the film, yeah, really nice mate, enjoyed it. Love the mise-en-scene and all that, very nice. Um, yeah, just checking in with how I'm doing, I uh, had another episode. So, uh, yeah, not great, shortly after that, probably a few weeks. Ended with like walking into the sunset and stuff. And, uh, yeah, actually went totally shit after that. But, uh, yeah, no, getting better. Bloody hell, mate, yeah. Um, but, yeah, loved the film, loved the bit with Sylvia, you and the new devil, that was lovely. And, um, yeah, great job. All right, now, give my uh, regards to the family, all the best now. Take care, bye-bye. I think that's it really man, but um, yeah, um, accept Jesus into your life, I guess. No, I'm joking, he doesn't exist.